Yes. Okay, we're back uh, with Mihaela Telecon. Uh, I'm Matt Pack, your host, or whatever you want to call me. But anyway, we're having a, a good time interviewing. I'm having a great time interviewing um, like Mihaela, and we um, this next episode is going to be on prevention because we both uh, spoke. Um, depressingly about the how the the medical industry is incredible it's so many things technology is is at its best right now i mean it's an incredible what what we can what we can do with the with medical in emergency rooms and on the you know in far lands of war on the, you know when when in triage units how, how we save lives in, on on in on wartime but we cannot for the life of god prevent cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's, and we have a major obesity epidemic. I, where do you feel we are headed? I mean, it's, it's getting worse. We both know that. But why? Why do you think we can't solve these riddles that have been around for so long and it's getting worse? I believe, like we said in our previous conversation, and for our listeners that missed that uh, video, they can always go back and, and uh, refresh on that, is the mismatch between our biology, the human as the animal, and the environment we live in. In other words, lifestyle, food and lifestyle choices we are making, will knowingly or unknowingly, are um seen or or we we see those in the current current state of health of globally in fact as we see that um industrial uh, modern civilization gets in like in china and in india and in romania where i'm coming from right um uh, latin america everywhere where we get the influence coming from, I don't want to say United States, because it's not only United States, but it's the biggest driver of this I modern just, industrialized living. Just blame, blame it on the white man. It's white man. <laughs> you got to blame it on the white man. He comes I'm in. White, I'm white, white woman. Flour, I may be tan. But <laughs> white sugar, processed it's food. It's the white everything. Right. So, so it does come in this modern industrialized 21st century lifestyle living comes at the cost we see that's the the price we pay yeah. for living the way we live right. the comfort we all love the comfort of ac or heat we love the comfort of not having to cook from scratch not to go to you know kill the animal or even plug out weeds for people that eat plant vegetables and fruits or to pick the fruit from the tree we have all the comfort that comes with the supermarket, with the yeah. prepackaged foods, with the microwave, with the drive throughs escalators, elevators. All of we're this. We're comfortable. Modern conveniences comfortable. have made us comfortable. Yeah. They sound good. Maybe when you have them this much. But the way we have it, like they overtaken our life, yeah. our resilient, human body resilience suffers. So right. we get sick. So let's back up. I, I want to go towards what we were just saying, but it made me think about this because um, if we, and guys out there, if you're listening and you haven't read the book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, we're big fans of that I book. I should have pulled it out. I have it in yeah. my bookshelf to show it. Maybe I will find it. Keep talking. I'll find it. But I, 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 you and I are both big fans of Weston A. Price and Francis, Francis Pottinger and Sally Fallon and, um, uh, there's a, there's that whole Pottinger foundation and the Weston Price foundation. These guys are really trying to preserve, um, that ancestral lifestyle and kind of, and, and going back to, to where we were less comfort. We weren't as comfortable as we now yes. are now. And the reason why, and I want you to speak on this more than me, Michaela, is, it. is, um, Weston Price who studied, I believe 13 indigenous cultures. Like, uh, and I want you to speak on this. He didn't have, he wasn't able to find heart disease and cancer and stroke and Alzheimer's was, didn't exist then. Like these modern diseases that are plaguing our, our, the United States especially weren't, weren't around. Why? People will, 
I, I see the skeptics coming and saying we did not have the data. We were not able to gather data like we can today and, and to report it. So we simply did not have access to that. In part, some of that may be true. But the reality is when uh, Dr. Uh, Price, she, he was a dentist, he had this aha moment, right? He's 1930s. He's, I don't know how many years he was in his career. By the time he realized something is happening to humans, I start to see more and more cavities and more and more crooked teeth and deformities in the, the bone structure of the, my, my patients. And I think it has to do with the diet, which was spot on. Which spot no one would on. say now. Now people would think that was crazy. Doctors would especially. No. Oh, I'm sure he, he, he was. Uh, probably people thought that he lost his marbles. But he, he had the, 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 not the awareness to put the two together. And then he had the curiosity to test if that was the case. So he went and he traveled to different parts of the world where people were not in contact with the modern right. living of 1930s. Guys, let's think. Right. Let, if we would consider primitive that right now, right? Yeah, they maybe sure. had occasional refined sugar and I right. don't think vegetable oils were in the picture yet then. Yeah. Yet they already, uh, he saw the, the, the diseases. So in those populations where they didn't have access to the white, some white flour and sugar and whatever other processed foods were at that time, he, despite the fact that these people didn't even brush their teeth, like did not have good oral hygiene habits, they did not have. The, the, the incidence of cat tooth cavities as well as um, the, their bone structure, both in their facial structure as well in their hip structure in women that yeah. were giving birth. Uh, they had nice round uh, bone structures that allowed for all the teeth to grow in their mouth, for the, the, the pelvic bones were large enough and, and elastic enough so the births were mo for most part non-eventful. No, no needs for C-sessions and all that. And in all his explorations, when he looked at what do they eat, how's their health, he, he found populations that ate more plants, some they ate less plants. They all, however, incorporated animal foods. There was no vegan population. Wasn't he seeking, was he, was, wasn't he seeking a, 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 a vegan population? You know what? I'm not sure if he did, but I know he reported, because I, I don't know how popular vegetarianism was at that time. I don't know I don't either, but I, I once heard, I, that's, what I, I, that, I, that's what he was looking for and he never found I, it. I, can't, I cannot answer that okay. question. I do okay. not recall, but I know he did not find so there's no documented, in human history, written, documented in human history records of humans being vegan. Vegan meaning not eating any animal products. Again, some ate higher plant, less right. uh, animal food. Some, so the proportions were different, but they were always had all of them. And all, I believe all, if not most of, people that were eating plant matter or plant the right foods, they fermented the right. foods. They were not yeah. eating plants in the way they, the nature gives them. Fermented or cooked and that's but not but not raw it. and especially you're not like walking in the forest saying, um, oh look there's some cauliflower right there. Like there, there, right. it wasn't man made that right. looks like we have today. Exactly. And, and for, especially with regards to grains, like the, the, the breads were fermented, the sourdough yeah. starches were fermented, legumes like beans, lentils, all of that was fermented. And properly there's a prepared. reason properly prepared. And that is because, again, it goes back to that traditional wisdom and then ancestral wisdom. Ancestral wisdom has nothing to do with traditional wisdom. It's way before agriculture, basically. Yeah. But as soon as humans start hunting and gathering and being nomads, and they settled more in a, in a land where they 
figure out they could grow crops and raise domesticated animals to make an easier, again, we go to that comfort, slightly easier living, they figure out that fermenting plants is the way to consume plants because, and this probably we'll talk about this in another um, inter se segment, but I will bring it up. Our human digestive system is not equipped no way to, don't to, say it i have to say this because i'm a vet <laughs> now <laughs> i speak as a veterinarian doctor that studied <laughs> anatomy and biology physiology um, comparative like no so what we you're learn saying every side by side let, let, so let, humans, let's clarify you <laughs> what you're saying is that humans are not designed uh, they're not herbivores. They don't have the digestive function no. the, to, no. to actually utilize. To live and thrive on plant matters. We can right. have a little bit. That's where the omnivore component kicks in. Right. We can have a little right. bit of plant matter properly prepared. We can pull out some nutrients from it. But by design, we are not plant eaters. We are not herbivores. That's what plant eaters are called. Therefore, Price could not find uh, any account of, of a human right. population that would eliminate all animal foods from their diet. Right. So um, now I forgot why we were talking about this, but it was like a big explanation of. I think you were just talking uh, about ah, the, why, the why prepare, food preparedness, food preparedness, and then and why they we did they, they, he didn't find the traditional diseases we see today. Exactly. So so it goes back to eating more in alignment with our biology and uh, eating to nourish the body and to fuel the body properly, that's fundamental. That's what uh, assures that someone has a good solid health foundation. It's not a guarantee that you would not have some sort of disease because again, we talked before, we have right. toxins in the environment, there's stress, yeah. uh, there is sleep that plays a role. There's the movement. There's how we, how much time we spend in nature, sun, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But nevertheless, and community and community was a bit was really big in these oh, cultures. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I just want to say something. Nevertheless, this this body is a biochemical factory, is an electrical platform, yeah. is energetical too, like. Uh, when I say en ah, energetical and, and electrical kind of go together, but this flesh and blood requires nutrients. Yeah. There are and, a specific, that claim, and a specific nutrients. Specific, right. There are people that claim to be Britarians. I have never met one. I would like to. They claim to live <laughs> only by breathing. It may be possible. I can't say it because I have not yeah. met one. But for all the people that I know and well, they, they're, I interact they're with, they eat. <laughs> they're dead. That's why you haven't met one. <laughs> but all the people that I know, we are flesh and blood. Therefore, we need elements that make flesh, flesh and blood. And yeah. that comes from food. So then... Nutritional degenerations yes. are real and they have to do with what we eat or don't eat. And when and that happened, right? Price did recognize that the cultures that were that were that were infiltrated by uh, the convenience foods, sugar, white sugar and they white flour. They started to show degeneration. Great. So that's probably one of the earliest accounts were of of becoming aware that food is is ca ca cause ca okay i can't say the word right now. Ca causes, causation ca yeah causational right it's yeah. it's it's not correlational yeah food causes what we are i i say i use a, an example or an analogy for people to just to, to think it's whatever you send to the printer that's what you print. Yeah. In other words, whatever we put in our body, the yeah. information. So food is information. Yeah. Food makes us. That's what we show up in the world. 
yeah. along with all the other things, but food, I would say plays a good 80% role right. into how we look, feel, how healthy we right. are or not. Yeah. So that's my long answer to why less then than now. Right, right. Yes, and, and then we have today where we've gotten totally disconnected from food and real food, and now we, we, no one cooks. We've talked about this. No one cooks. We're a seated culture. You know, we are, um, are, need to unlearn because we're, we're being bombarded and programmed from TV and, and marketing and magazines and Hollywood on what's good to eat, mm -hmm. what's, what's, what you shouldn't eat. And now we have an epidemic of, of illness and, the, this, and preventing it from, from happening is, is so easy. You know, we've talked, we, we've talked behind the scenes on this. Like it's, it's simple, but not easy, right? We know this. There's, a, yes. there's people that are, are addicted to sugar and there's food addictions and there's eating disorders. And, but by and large, if people would just use food as medicine, right? As we know it can be, um, we can prevent all diseases. Am I right? Can on that? I say like something? How, Yes. If people would just eat food to nourish and fuel, yeah. they will not need medicine. Yeah. <laughs> How is that? Just like instead that. Of, instead of eating, making food your, be your medicine, how about food is your food, yeah, so exactly. you don't yeah. need medicine. I'm, yeah, I'm reframing that completely. Because, yeah, you're right. I like that because it can, be, it can also be poisonous, right? I mean, we know that food can be either medicinal or it can be poisonous by the, either the quality or the yes. amount of what you're ingesting. Yes. Um, and this is where we've talked, like, are you, like I always say a headache, a headache is not an aspirin deficiency, you know? Like your, your loose stool, like instead of going to take Pepto for a stomach ache, you might need to think on what you had for dinner last night or mm -hmm. are you drinking enough water or it could be a side effect from medication. But by and large, no one is paying attention, right? To how they're not paying attention to the signals and they're not paying attention they're they're treating their body like a trash can and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to re-educate and, and unlearn people to show that food can prevent disease improve quality of life and and help you feel better right and look better yeah i want to say something how many of of your our audience you think relates to cars I, I I think they all should, right? All yeah. should, yes. This is I be think a great so, analogy. especially yes. in the United States, because uh, we must, especially in Florida, we must yeah. drive. It's not like buses or walking very much. So, when it comes to car, we have a very clear understanding of what the role of the car is for us, right? I need this car because without the car, I can't take my kids to school. I can go to work to, you know, generate income so I can have food on the table. So we understand very well what's the role of the car, what are the implications of having or not having a good, reliable car. A healthy car. And, and yeah. I call gold reliable car and Healthy, yeah. uh, when we see the the light goes on for uh, we need to add gas we add gas we change the oil uh, periodically we we take all the measures yeah we know according with the manual or what we know from long life experience to have a good car right and when we 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 drive uh, and now I'm gonna kind of shift a little bit there are many gas stations on our way to work every day for some reason we do not stop at every or every other gas station to put gas in our car just because it's there also when we go to the gas station and uh, our friend uh, let's say we go we have a friend with us we we uh, park the car in the station and my car is uh, gas yours is diesel and I don't feel pressure to put diesel in my car because you know I don't want to hurt you because you're putting diesel and I'm putting gasoline. It's all very clear. My car is gas, I put gas, yours is diesel, you put diesel. I only put gas in my car when the tank is low or right. periodically when I, I want, I have like my, goes below half, I'm gonna fill it up, so whatever it is. Right. However, when it comes to this other car, our 
biological body yeah. that allows us to create things, to show up for work and make the money yeah. uh, and be mothers and fathers and grandfathers and everything for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. For some reason, we don't have it quite clear what's the role of this body. How is this body allowing, making it possible for me to do all the things I want to do? Yep. How do I take care of the body? How I'm proactive so it doesn't break down. I have a good reliable healthy body right yeah. i can rely on my strength i can rely on my energy i can rely on my focus i can rely on my looks if i need to find a partner whatever the case mm -hmm. is. yeah For some reason we that's not so clear and then we go to the party and the people next to me are eating the very food i know is not good for me or drinking the stuff but i feel bad not to eat it because now they, they feel bad that they eat it and i'm not eating it and yeah. you see where i'm going yeah do you see how? Good analogy. It yeah. doesn't make any sense that we take care of our car and we don't go out of line to please anybody with regards yeah. to our car. When it comes to our body, which is so much more important to our existence than the right. car is, we bend all sorts of rules and we do all sorts of compromises. Yeah. And, and I the know car this has... is crazy. But no. this is what's happening. No, it's a great analogy. And if, 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 if people resonate with that, which I, th I hope they will, it, it, should say, it should tell them that there's a factory specified fuel for the car. Yes. Right? And, <laughs> that too. I, know, I mean, there's multiple meanings from your analogy. Oh, one, it's one like that, everything. One, <laughs> but one that I get from it is like, you know, like it's, 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 there's not a, a paleo gasoline from, for, for my vehicle. There's not a vegan, there's not a keto, there's not a South Beach. There is a, a factory fundamental fundamental fuel uh, that we have evolved eating um, mm -hmm. for millions of years. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, like, so it's like, we don't put diesel fuel, I'll, I'll say sugar and processed foods, snack foods, five hour energy, convenience foods, things that are in a package in a box. Those mm -hmm. are, that's diesel fuel. To this, this in the gasoline that we, car, <laughs> right? Yeah, this it's diesel fuel. It's, it's not our. This vehicle does not, not call for that type of fuel. It's not compatible. So okay. what happens? You have to take it to the shop, and you got to get it worked on, right? Yeah. But if you want a vehicle it that's healthy down. and runs runs for a long time and is less likely to break down, preventing a breakdown, you put the factory specified fuel. Yeah. So, what fuel? <laughs> <laughs> the million dollar so what's question. the human fuel the, the million dollar question that that we have we don't have to talk about any of this stuff anymore it's done we're done we don't have there's nothing else to talk about anymore we have the answer if we that we we're going to save the planet right now we're going to prevent disease what prevents oh, disease so in your opinion seriously i think this is a good one like we have a we do have a obesity epidemic heart disease cancer stroke uh, uh Alzheimer's, autoimmune diseases, gut diseases, like Crohn's colitis, like irritable bowel, so many things that are that are debilitating people's lives. If and that are to, completely preventable. Completely and, preventable. And reversed to great degree yeah. through what goes. So I would venture to say you mom. said like food is like 80, 90 percent. Like I think it's a hundred percent. Like, I mean, like, seriously, because how many call, like, do we really need the exercise? I mean, I'm serious. I own a gym. I own a gym. I, I think I'm, for, I'm like, for health, for, for bed, for, this is my take on exercise. And now I feel like we are going another direction. But since you right. brought it up. Right. The role of exercise is not to help you lose weight or maintain right. weight. Exactly. The role yeah. of exercise is to help you feel good in your body. Right. Number and one. Compliment. You look different. You're yeah. confident, you look different, you stand up tall when you exercise than when yeah. you don't. It's to improve your cardiovascular fitness and, and resilience. Right. It's to yeah. boost up your ability. Let's go into the mitochondria, like how you generate energy. Yeah. It's for mental health and safety. For we sure. are meant to move. We are yeah. when you start when you see you stagnate, your energy stagnates. Yeah. So for exercise is fabulous. In fact, like, in fact, I call it movement. Right. The more we move, the more 
the better we feel. Right. But your way, uh, maintenance has nothing to do with exercise or very right. little to do with exercise. Right. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was getting at. Because I do think movement... Oh movement oh it's very important it yes. complements your nutrition it shouldn't because there's plenty of overweight people that go to the gym seven days a week right yes so, and run marathons and things right. like that yes yeah. no and that doesn't mean they're not fit it's about the functionality it's about the yeah. flexibility it's about the strength of the muscle and the bone it's just oh oh uh close i have to plug my phone can you still hear me uh it's low I battery you. i have to see That's where okay. is my closest uh, I have twenty percent battery. I need to bring the so charger. You got Tom. You got you got. We got Tom. Because I'm going to gonna, I'm gonna go this... in. A, I'm going to go in a second too. Because what I want to ask you next is. Okay. How do we knock out multiple birds with one stone? We have these. Awesome. That we have. We have a, a problem on our hands. If you had one thing to throw at the at the to prevent these, these terrible diseases that are affecting so many people in the, all over the world, one thing that would knock out all these birds with one stone. So, so let's introduce the concept and then we can talk in the other segment. So yes. that would be what we eat to, to fuel the metabolic human fire. Yeah. Um, so it's the food we eat to fuel the body, which will also nourish the body, which will co help us control systemic inflammation. Mm -hmm. And if we were to bring one hormone that's crucial in this whole thing, metabolic hormone, I, I don't want people to think thyroid or adrenal, it's insulin. So in the next one, we, we can talk about how, what, how we uh, address all these chronic diseases through one target intervention, low, keeping insulin low, so we keep insulin, so we keep inflammation low, mm -hmm. so we heal the right. body basically from from a metabolic point of view. And then right. the other huge component is the gut, right. that's where we pull in the nutrients. So we fuel properly, but we want to make sure we nourish properly as well. Right, right. Those are the two pillars that I use when it comes to food. Like, how do I select my food so? I show up in the world as the best version of me, focused, right. energetic, healthy, yada, 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 whatever we want, right? It's food is fuel and food is nourishment. Bam. Everything else yeah. is secondary. It just falls into its place at the, the way it's supposed to. And then and it's it. simple. Yeah. Right. It's, I won't say it's easy right. to get there. Right. It's simple, just like breathing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <sighs> it's simple. And getting look, and I think what you what you you're saying as well, by getting healthy, we prevent Alzheimer's, we prevent uh, cardiovascular disease and stroke yes. and cancer, and but we also, as a byproduct, prevent obesity all at the same time. Yes. Right. Yes. Or because or we, if it's already there, we reverse it. The body has correct. incredible resilience. Because skin, it's not like we, we you know this more than I. Skinny, pe skinny people have type two diabetes too, right? So I don't want to say yep. that. You know, not always, but we can definitely affect the, the obesity fat. epidemic yes. by food quality, food quantity, and having gut better gut dysbiosis, absorbing mm -hmm. nutrients better, and managing uh, insulin. So just to say the, the name, because everybody's like, oh, but you're not telling us what it is. It's low carb, high fat. In fact, my mantra is eat less, mostly fat and meat. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the next episode. That's the next episode right there. That's you the, know? The, the sound bite. That's your that's your sound bite right there. People were yes. like, what? like yeah, yes. there like, Michael back? Pollan yeah. was was right on one thing. One Eat thing. less. Yeah. Yeah. About mostly plants, unfortunately, not for humans. That's for well, the look, cow. That's the next that's the, that's our next talk, right? And like everybody talks about eating less, but everybody's starving because no one eats enough fat. No and, I, and I and I yep. keep telling people like, listen, I only eat zero. I eat zero to two times a day because I am satisfied. Yes. I don't, I'm not. I'm not craving because you're sugar fueling or properly. Correct. Yeah. Fueling properly. Let's talk in the next about the fuel. What is this? Let's fuel? tease them. We're gonna yes. tease them on the fuel. So, where where do our my listeners find you? 
And then- oh, uh, so uh, you can go to primalfitmiami.com. That's that's my gym uh, website. My and Matt Pack. My name is Matt Pack. You can find me on Facebook at Matt Pack. What about you? Matt Where can Pack. people find you? I'm on Facebook, Mihaila Telekan. My personal, my business is Mihaila Telekan's Healings with Foods, and my website is Healing with Foods or MihailaTelekan.com. Either one works. Google and- will Google will pick us up. Oh yeah. Plus I have the book when I think when you Google my, my name, it comes up uh, because of the book as well. We didn't talk about my book. Maybe next time when I explain the fuel. Make peace I, with fat. Oh yes. And meat. That's second what's, book. What's the beef? What's the beef with beef? Leave, leave the beef alone. <laughs> <laughs> leave okay, the beef cool. alone. Yes. Okay. See you in the next. All right. See you next one. Bye. Bye.